It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Yeah, I'm back. And guess what? How exciting. The new iPhone is... Oh, you already, you already knew that. Well, I'm going to unbox it anyway. Mac Break Weekly, next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 371, recorded October 8th, 2013. Trojan Squirrel. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers the latest from Cupertino from Apple. Uh, I'm back. Thank you all for uh, not leaving. <laughs> but, you know, we had great co-hosts. Thank you, Andy and Renee, for filling in for me. Nice job, gentlemen. I, I think I think we demonstrated that the format is sturdy enough that even when we <laughs> deliberately try to drive people away, they'll still be here. So I think that's a good name for it. This is the show with a sturdy format. <laughs> A sturdy uh, <laughs> format. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, so good to see and you, your squirrels. After I Very saw good. a squirrel in Troy. On the walls of Troy. I'll, I'll show Troy, you the picture later. I went to school there. Not Michigan. Not oh. New York. Troy in the beautiful country of Turkey. Did you go to school there? Uh, well, I wasn't paying much <laughs> attention during school, so I might as well have been in Turkey for all the professors prepared. <laughs> Thanks to Renee Ritchie for filling in too from imore.com. Good to see you, Renee. Thank you, Leo. Was it a Trojan uh, squirrel and did you let it in? It was must have been a Trojan squirrel and inside it was tiny little nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I had to check. Show title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't really... By the way, Jason Stell from uh, IDG, editor, Hello. editorial director for both Macworld and PC World Magazine. Good to have you as well. It's great to be here. They uh, they don't really know that it's Troy. You know, Schleeman went. He said, I think it's Troy. He dug. They found walls. He said, it's Troy. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Let's go home. <laughs> and uh, they make a big deal. Troy is like a layer cake. There's five layers, five different Troys built one on top of the other, and they make a big deal of that. But they all look like rubble to me. Mm. <laughs> but the older rubble's a little more rubbly. Yeah, it's, it's a little more rubble. <laughs> it's about historical, it. meaningful rubble. Come on. <laughs> and on the highest level, level six, there's a squirrel. <laughs> Uh, I had a wonderful trip in case nobody's make. interested, but uh, but I'm ready to get back to work. And I understand that something happened with Apple during my vacation. Something? What? They, Everything. They, they denied that thing that everyone thought that they were doing. But it wasn't true, and so we now know it is. There turned out to be a thing. rumor, but there could be more <laughs> more more details to come. Actually, the so number Floyd, one did question. Did you pick the wrong month to, get, to take off? <laughs> the number one question, did you guys get an invitation today? No. Uh, I did not get an no. invitation today. Because nope. if no. they were going to do an event on October 15th, this would be the day. Yeah, well, the day's not over yet, but yeah. When if, did they do it last year? Uh, last year, it was, I think, six weeks after the, the event in the previous month. So it, we would be on track for two weeks from, from as we're recording this on the Tuesday. And since you're going to Ireland. I'm supposed Ireland. to be going to Ireland next week, so please <laughs> don't have an Apple event next week. <laughs> no, I think, I think we're all hoping that it's going to be on uh, the 22nd, 23rd, somewhere in there. It, Renee, are you hearing any rumbling, rumors? I, same thing as Jason. I mean, it's it, they do it like clockwork now. It's it's just a matter of when they have the products ready to show off. It's not really clockwork because October 23rd, which was last year's event, was the first time they'd had a big event in October. Yeah, this seems to be the new. I mean, they're it's changing new things clockwork. up a little bit, but it's, <laughs> it's new. like for one year. And they can well, do second it. Second annual clockwork. They used to do it every two weeks. Of uh, they'd have two weeks where they would do um, a warning, and now it's down to a week. Right. <laughs> just so make it as inconvenient <laughs> as possible for everybody who has to fly right. in. And yeah. did they announce anything else while I was gone? I know we have a new phone, and I want to thank, by the way, Josh Windish on my staff and his wife, Vanessa, who works at the Apple Store, who probably broke rules <laughs> to squirrel oh, aside. No, Leo, I'm sure no, it was I all above board. I, I pathed him. I'm, I said, I'm sure <laughs> nobody did anything that would get them censured or fired from their job, Leo. Absolutely Nothing not. untoward. No, no, he, I, she waited in line for me. There you but go. this is, I'm unboxing it right now. This is a 5S, the gold. And here I learned something interesting today. All of you manly men have gold iPhones. Absolutely. What is the story with that? Well, it's, Brian it's new. It's the only acceptable color. Well, different. we know it's different, right? 
I actually wanted gold, and you know that it is kind of pretty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's yep. it's more of a yeah it's it really is a very subtle understated not it isn't a hey look how much money I ha I have so much money my phone is made out of gold so it's a it's a very classy sort of gold yeah it's not a super shiny it's it's like I mean just like the silver one this is the gold colored version of that it's that textured kind of yeah it's a light light yeah. gold it's not like a warm big rich gold it's just pretty yeah it's it totally distracts gold. from the fact that it's still a rounded rectangle Leo totally distracts. <laughs> The gold ring around the home button puts it over the top. And then this is, of course, the new... Uh, Touch ID? Is that what they call it? Touch, Touch ID. ID so, yeah. uh, of course, I was here when the announcements were made. I was here for that event. So what I didn't know is how well this Touch ID worked. We've had it for a while now. What do you think? Uh, is it is the fingerprint sensor uh, good? Works it like works a charm for me. Yeah. It works really well, but you have to. You really have to do a good job. I think when you set it up for the first time, because I think I, I think I did the. I, I, I registered like my primary thumb, uh, kind of quickly in my excitement to get it to work, and after like two weeks later of saying try again, try again, I finally like wiped all my fingerprints, not off the my hands off the device, <laughs> and basically did did a little bit more deliberately. Well, here's where I'm going to be hitting. Here's where how I'm, I'm typically going to be touching this button. Now I'm doing something. Do you do, do you guys do this? I'm waiting till it's English. <laughs> do you guys do that? Because once it's English, then I can swipe it. I'm afraid if I swipe it when it's Korean, you just set the language. <laughs> it's just going to stay that way. Do you I guys do that, or is that just me? That's just That's, you. I, I found the first Touch ID set up awkward, Leo. Like, I wasn't used to it. I didn't know what I was quite doing. It would vibrate. I'd pull my finger off too fast. I'd put it back too slow. It, it took me a while. I, it, the second and third time were far better than the first. Yeah, I agree. It was... Uh... It tries to explain what you need to do, but it, right. it you've got to, you know, I was like, tap, 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 tap. No, that's not how you do it. You got to be patient and, and, yeah. and it reads it once and then it actually tells you, okay, now shift your position and so that you can get the other, you know, the corners of your, of your print so that if you're in any kind of weird angle, um, it's smart. I like how they did it. it. It's very friendly and it works pretty well. Yeah. yeah. It's also, it's also nice enough to tell you that if, when you're trying to register your fingerprint, if it's, if you're not giving it what it needs, it will actually say, hold it, hold it longer now. Okay. <laughs> hold it again. So it's the so same it's, passive disappointment as original GPS systems would get. Is it going to do that at some point now? Uh, you have to set it up. So when you get through everything, it'll ask you to, if you want to turn on, you turn on your passcode and then um, you can, you can have it also remember a thumbprint at that point. Right. It's tied to the passcode. You have to have a passcode as well. So you've got ah, another method of authentication. That four-digit passcode. Well, yeah, it doesn't have to be a four-digit passcode. In fact, when I turned on Touch ID, I went from a four-digit passcode up to a much more complicated password because I don't need to enter it very often. So I think it's actually more secure in that way because, right. because my alternate password is much better than the old four-digit pin code that I used to use. Pardon me for covering old material because I know you probably talked it's about this. new to this. you. It's new to me, and but it's only, I'm the only one it's new to. Unless, <laughs> and it's not like we, like we, it's like the entire world seems to think that everybody buys a brand new iPhone the first week of release and then it ceases to become of interest to anybody. Yeah, we're done. What's next? What's new? We're only arriving in October, Leo. This is new for everybody. Well, and that was why I was so pleased that Josh uh, put one aside for me because I did try to order it and it said sometime in October. And I thought, well, God, I don't know if I want to be that out of the loop. Uh, faster? Yes. Noticeably, yes. noticeably super so. faster. Super yeah. faster. Yeah. Best, best device for iOS 7, I think, so far. Well, and I noticed that the iOS 7 camera is much different. I was able to get iOS 7 on my uh, iPad mini, which I took with me, uh, yeah. and I and on my iPhone, uh, my old iPhone 5. Um, I, I, the camera is so much different, uh, but I, it, it, I think it really is made, this, it's made for this camera, right? Yeah, that, I think the processor has a lot to do with it. The the DSP, the you know signal processor in the in the the chip that's in the 5S, they're using that a lot. There's a lot of back end processing happening in terms of what they're focusing on and low light, and it's doing a lot of really intelligent stuff. Plus the the new flash. Um, yeah, right. So uh, that, that, you know the processor is not is, the new flash. Is part flash of the story here finally. <laughs> No, well, yeah, flash, there's light. two flashes now. The double the flash. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so it's now asking me to set up Touch ID. So uh, I'll do that, right? Yeah. Scan the finger or thumb you normally use on the home button. I'm a lefty, so I just put it there. Okay. Lift and rest your finger repeatedly. And what is, as I do that, it's filling in the little whorls and loops. Now, somebody told me it's, it's only taking nine points of similarity, which gives it more reliability. Uh, it then hashes those. It doesn't store an image. Uh, actually, it was a... a my friend Chamala, who's a, a Turkish uh, podcaster, who's also a security expert and has used fingerprint readers for a long time, he said, for that reason, it's more reliable. Right. But but the potential for a collision is higher. 
Right, one in fifty thousand. So big deal, right? Big deal. I mean, what's the chance that one of that fifty, that other fifty the guy in the fifty thousand is a crook? That's that's basically the same nope. chances that you'll have an evil doppelganger anyway. Right, <laughs> find your find your fingerprint twin. So I've lifted and rested my finger on the home button repeatedly, and now adjust yes, my grip. Change your grip. What the hell does that mean? Just hold it, hold the phone a little differently because pr chances are you should just I use been, a different finger? No, no, same yet. finger. No, no, same oh, so finger. So I'm now stuck with this maybe, finger forever. It, well, well, no, because it'll edges, remember. Oh, because it's a different angle. Yeah, that's right. it. Because you don't always use the exact same angle. So it wants. Can I do yeah. my right finger? I've, I've now committed yes, to my left. It remembers finger. up to five. Five. So this will just be your first one. Shirley Bassey's left Success. finger was the one that didn't make it as a hit. Uh, touch ID is ready. Your print can be used. Continue. Now, yeah. uh, now I have to do a passcode, which I will do. Don't look. And it's very, one, very two, smart. Three, because it, one, two, three, four. Yeah. That, no, but if that's, you, if nobody would to, guess that, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. We won't tell. I, 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 I like the way that they've really defined the fingerprint as a secondary sort of thing. Really, the, the passcode is still your primary. Uh, and if you have not used your fingerprint in a while or if you've restarted the phone or a couple other situations, it will ask for your passcode before it will let you use oh, the fingerprint again. Oh, interesting. So that yeah. passcode is not to be is not just a backup, a fallback. It's really right. it's part still of your the, primary. Yeah, I think if that's you good. You reboot forty-eight yes. hours have passed since you last used it, or you fail five times, it'll ask you for your passcode okay. again. So that's it. Now, if I if I lock this phone, now the next time I, I do this to unlock it, uh, I just slide it. Well, that's to put in the passcode, or you can just or put just do this. Right. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Hey, Leo, if you pull the, if you lock it again and then put down sorcery. notification center. If I do that right. again, yeah, and now I do the... Uh, now pull down notification center first. Yeah. Now you can watch the icons fly in from underneath notification center, like all the cool kids. Watch the icons. Put your, yeah, put your thumb on put it Put your now. thumb back on it. Woo! <laughs> oh, I saw them kind of, kind of, kind of underneath uh, in the translucency. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, of all the things uh, on iOS 7, I'm not thrilled about is the... There's a lot of flying in of icons. Yeah, and that's and that's why I think that a, a lot of people who are thrown off by iOS 7, if you, if you try it on the 5S, that's the first machine I think that's designed so that where the the animation is so smooth and so natural it's better. that it seems to make sense. Right on my on my uh, iPads and in, on my earlier generation oh, iPhones, right. it's it's not it's not it's not like it's it's terrible, but there's enough of a hesitation, there's enough of a stutter that I'm noticing things moving in it's, as opposed to It's more to simply, annoying. Okay, you're right. It is not so annoying on this. Yeah, it turns out there's an uncanny valley for these kind of animations. Isn't that yeah. funny? And, and this one can manage it. Here's the other thing I'm not crazy about. I'd like to get your take. Yeah. I'm not crazy about the Door folders. Stays open. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. It's terrible. Yeah. It's a mistake. They need to fix it. Okay. It's like this idea that, they, that it's like they've forgotten that when uh, the only thing the folders are, are good for are for launching apps from. Yeah. And it's not as though, well, I, 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 of course, I want to see all the other game driving games that are in my folder when I quit uh, when I quit, uh, quit out of that one. It's just yeah, a terrible the home idea. button should be sacrosanct. The home button should take me back to the home yes. screen. Yes. And now whether you're in a folder or a newsstand, that, that's the one that gets me is I'm reading an app in newsstand and I press the button to go back to switch to another app and it shows me newsstand. Don't want that. And then I have to press it again Don't want to that. go back out. And that's just that's not how the home Don't button like should work. Don't like that. It's not. Yeah. So a just to overly, explain what to, so people see what I'm talking, what we're talking about. For those of you watching, so I opened the extras folder and I opened the calculator. Now home should and has always in the past brought us home. Instead, it brings us back to the folder. Yeah. I'm also not crazy about the folder layout. I feel like it's a kind of waste of space. Although I learned, which is kind of cool, that you can have multiple pages in a folder. Yeah. Which is yeah. which is kind that's of an interesting thing. idea. Right. That that could be useful. But I'm not crazy about the waste of space there. I feel like that's not, it could be a little, but th that's a minor. Sure. This is, I mean, this is such a rethink for Apple that there are lots of things There's that are weird be, about it yeah. that yeah. one would hope they will yeah. be fixing in future yeah. updates. But, you know, they, uh, it's very different. And you know what I works, really like? Edges. I really like the multi, uh, multitasking. Uh, this is a really nice way to handle yeah. that. It's, it's, a, it's very web OS, right? Oh, have we seen this before? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't oh, I like the, the icons. I think the icons help a lot. The thumbnail. Yeah, because you know, the ability to and the ability to swipe these off, or another thing I just learned: multi swipe them time. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole uh, hold down until it starts to jiggle, and then there's a little tiny X. I mean, that's such an unfriendly it was, it behavior. Good. This is and better. This yeah. is well, much it's, more yeah, it's, it's it's prejudiced against the idea that you would ever force quit an app. Whereas people just seem to think are more naturally proposed to think that hey, I'm done with this. I want I want this gone now. 
But the, the other cool thing is I didn't notice until uh, until I was using it for a day or two is that those previews are actually live. So if you're playing a video, That's you will cool. actually see the video continue to play as you as you cycle through that way. I do think the camera is superlative. Uh, and as much as I've used the other cameras, the Moto X had an update. That's what I took to yeah. on my trip. Uh, it's There's nothing like the iPhone 5. And the 5S is even better. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's they, they, they made so many steps forward. There's only one step backward. I think the, the, the reason why I have this up here is that the 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 uh, the uh, burst mode is more useful and more significant on the iPhone than it is on any other camera, uh, any other camera phone, because this will simply shoot two frames per second at the exact same quality. It shoots every other picture. And I actually shot a video of how long can you hold down <laughs> that that pick <laughs> that, that that button. So I got 200. And, I was act and, and when I got back home, I was actually timing it out. It shot 230 something shots at 10, 10 frames per second and then it slowed down to about seven or eight and it kept on that until about 500 at which point i got bored and stopped <laughs> so that's and and so but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry what i'm getting at is that every time you're shooting an uncooperative subject or you know you're you're, you're chasing your kid around and the kid is not going to stop and and please stand still please do this or you, you got a group shot of four or five people and not everybody has their eyes over at the same time this this idea of like holding the, the phone up and clicking one picture that's done on the phone on the 5s you will almost always want to shoot a burst of 10 or 12 because one of these 10 shots is going to be perfect there's this one is the uh, I, I was shooting a burst of the squirrel in the tree uh, and of 30 shots, there happened to be two in which the pose was kind of okay, uh, and the the subject was sharp because this was a very this was like just a uh, half an hour before uh, before sunset. And but if you if you get one shot at it, you're probably going to miss it. But if you take a burst of 10 or 20, you're probably going to find at least one frame that's going to be pretty good. There's there's still one problem that I found with it. It's I don't I don't know why, but it loves low ISOs. It will do anything. It will sell its first child uh, <laughs> on eBay to do, to take a picture with a low ISO. Well, it's because it's and less so, grainy. It want, you want it to do that, right? Yeah. Well, but yeah. Well, it's a little bit. It's going to be a little bit more grainy at a higher ISO. But the problem is that so it's saying, well, you're you're inside a library in a sort of a dimly lit reading hall. I can shoot at 64 ISO, can't I? No, no. I really. I'm going to shoot a 64 ISO. No, no I really. Yeah. I'm going to shoot a 64 ISO, and if I'm going to, and the, the shutter speed is going to be one fifteenth of a second. So hold it real, real steady. Yeah. Well, I can't hold it that steady. So that's why there's there there are a lot of shots in which, if not for the fact that it was going for a 64 or 100 ISO and a long exposure right. of like one thirtieth or one fiftieth, one fifteenth, it would have taken a better picture than most of the other phones. Is, is there so no way to overrule that? None that I know of. the The only trick that I've kind of found that kind of works is that I, I haven't certified this yet. But I noticed that when I use the flash, it tends to go for a shorter shutter speed. But there's no way to sh to force it to go for a shorter speed. Yeah, sometimes if you if you tap and hold on a really dark area, you you know you force it to adjust to the to the darkness, and it will it will actually crank the ISO. Is that down or up? Up. So, um, up. but it's it's finicky. It definitely is finicky. Uh -oh. Yeah. Now I can't that's that's the one phone. thing I wish they'd fix. I'm holding it wrong. Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it took four. We tries. have a new. We have a new. We're holding it. Yeah, wrong. used to You're it. Touching it wrong. Uh, yeah, but I want to program uh, maybe this finger too, in case right. My, yeah, you, my index you, finger. Up to five. I, I've got I four of them. Two thumbs and an index finger. Yeah. Okay. You what, what you'll discover is. The, all the different ways you happen to pick up your phone. In yeah, I just discovered that. Yes, you're right. Right. Yeah. right? So I, I did my left thumb first, and then I used it for a little while, and I went, oh, also right index right. finger. And then I put it down on my kitchen counter yes. and realized I was waking it up with my right thumb. And it turns out I, I have four really common different ways right. based on where the phone is that I pick up the phone. I had no idea. So I can add, uh, add oh, it says fingerprint one, and I can now add fingerprint uh, so two. Now t okay. One of the nice things about that screen is if you touch your... Uh, if you touch your thumb to it, yeah, it'll uh, highlight. It says, "Oh, that's fingerprint." So you can one. actually see oh, by look. touch which, which one is, is which. which. Yeah, let me do that again. That's cool. Yeah, that's finger one. Yeah, mm. you know what finger two but, is? But, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no, no people know me a little too well, don't they? <laughs> they know what finger two is. They know what finger two okay. is. So now I'm going to do my index finger because I want to. I want to be able to do that as well. I noticed when I want to take a picture, that's kind of how I hold my my right. phone up. All right. So um, I, I have noticed that the, in general, the, the, the feeling is that uh, people are very happy. Is uh, any negatives? Well, there was the security issue. So let's talk about that. In fact, Rene Ritchie, you were, <laughs> I'm more, was it you that wrote that article at I'm yes. yep. I saw the article in which uh, you said the media got it wrong and made it a security problem when it wasn't, in, it wasn't one in fact at all. Now, I avoided that. I've already updated 
between the time I left, uh, there have been two versions, three versions of iOS 7, uh, 702. Alex Lindsay always said, don't use the first version of any Apple OS. Don't use the second version. Use the third that <laughs> fixes the problems that the second version f added when it fixed the problems with the first version. By the third, by 7.02, it's going to be good. So now's the time. Um, it wasn't so much the updates. It, it was just... I mean, iPhone 5S has these new security features and it has lots of them like activation lock and like touch ID and trusted uh, machine. But it also has a ton of new convenience features like um, control center. And you have to choose as a responsible adult user whether you want a really convenient iPhone, a really secure iPhone or some middle ground. And the problem with the reporting is that they were phrasing it in such a way that I was getting continual letters from people like, oh, Touch ID doesn't work. I'm turning it off. I'm not going to have a passcode anymore. Or this is a, a security flaw. I'm do and they were doing, they were making choices that degraded their security due to misinformation that was being presented ah. about it. And the, for example, uh, you can use Control Center to put your iPhone in airplane mode from the lock screen. And people were afraid that thieves would steal their iPhones put it in airplane mode, and they yeah. couldn't track it. Yeah. Uh, you can disable that very easily in the settings. You can turn Siri off so that Siri only works from the lock screen with Touch ID enabled. There's all these different settings you can use. But, but that's always been a problem. Siri was always uh, uh, accessible from the lock screen unless you disabled it. That's yes. not new. And now if you disable it, it's only accessible from the lock screen with Touch right. ID, which I think is a much better choice. And there were several things like Touch ID can be foiled. Well, yes, if you have a CSI level person who goes to the trouble of duplicating your fingerprint in a multi-step, yeah. not you know non-trivial process, right. and then happens to get physical access to your phone within the 48 hour window of you last using it with a finger. And, and But it wasn't reported that way. It was just reported as, you know, Apple is doomed, this stuff doesn't work and that cause a lot of problems. How, um, okay, so so you, you would certainly recommend 702, especially Absolutely, if you're yes. Greek, because apparently you couldn't, <laughs> the Greek <laughs> language didn't work <laughs> properly. And I was in Greece. Who yes. knew? By the way, I, I, a little observation as I'm going around, and I think this is going to be very interesting to see what happens. Until we got to Turkey, where a lot of people had iPhones, almost everybody had Nokia phones. I can't tell you how many times I heard, diddle doo doo diddle doo doo diddle doo 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 <laughs> Not only did they have Nokia phones, they hadn't updated their ringtone. <laughs> it's like everybody. And, I, and of course, it's because they're less expensive. They're cheap kind of candy bar phones. And I really wonder with Microsoft buying Nokia, what's going to happen in that world? And that may be a huge opportunity for Apple. I think that's why analysts are saying, do a cheap phone, Apple. And that I think maybe it's even more urgent because Nokia is basically, I think, going to kill that market. Right? So anyway, I just, just an observation yeah. from being somewhere besides the U.S., I just think that we we don't we don't pay enough attention to the I don't care segment of the market, mm -hmm. the yeah. people for whom a phone is just a right. practical device that right. they have absolutely no emotional connection to. Yeah, and so in that's, Turkey, that, a lot of people I, had that, iPhones. It was very interesting. Yeah. I will note that my mother, who's had a candy bar phone for her entire life, uh, asked me today what I was doing with my iPhone 5C yeah. when I finished reviewing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a market. It is it is Warhol for her. It is a pop art iPhone. Oh, that's interesting. It is, isn't it? All right, so uh, battery life. Last question. Battery life. Uh, I I find that it's, it's as good as the iPhone five. However, Ooh, that's disappointing. You're not used. You're not used to the fact that iOS seven. When you iOS seven has different sets of defaults than iOS five. Uh, excuse me, than iOS six did. So it's. I was getting not as good battery life until I went in and changed all the Wi-Fi settings back to the way that I had them before. All the all the other notification things uh, set back to the way I had okay. before. Okay. So I, I think that it's as good as the iPhone five running iOS six. That's, that's good enough. Apple seems to be um, optimizing for the idea that you leave the house in the morning, yeah. you work and use use the phone a little bit while you're out, and then you come home at night and plug it back in. And Not that, when you go to bed, but before you... Yeah, in yeah. The and and that, that works for me. I, I have almost never had it drop off before I got home at the yeah, end of the day. But that's what they're... Well, you know, I want 18 is, hours. This is what Apple... But Apple wants, doesn't want to give you a thick phone with a big battery. I mean, that's... They, you mean they, like this? Yeah, they, they want to optimize that's for a... Such a, a thick as, phone with uh, such a yeah, big battery. Yeah, I know. It's, no it's, it's, it's sickening <laughs> to even look at it. <laughs> it's so thick. So I, <laughs> Moto get X absolutely gets... I get all day. I mean, until I go to bed that night. Yeah, well, I, I usually do, too. I, I think there are some quirks in iOS 7, too, where apps can run in the background now, truly run in the background. Yeah. And occasionally I will get a misbehaving app, and yeah. that will lead to trouble. That'll kill you, but that, that happens little, everywhere. But, I, you know, but Apple too. obviously is going to solve for what it thinks is the right amount of battery 
and no more because they don't want to make it any bigger right. or any heavier. Right. Okay, so good enough, not great. Because didn't they yeah, put, it's, isn't it's like 10% more hard. battery in there? Isn't there more battery in that? Yeah, but it's doing more stuff. It, yeah, it it's busier. And it's got more background. Much faster. Stuff now, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. every time you switch from one app, one app to another, it's doing so much graphics. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's oh, you I, didn't I mean like you—you you meant that, not the not the desktop. Sure, background. the parallax too. Yes, every time <laughs> you turn, Ooh. which Ooh. makes the phone so much easier to use. I mean, I was so confused <laughs> by not knowing if it's at this angle versus that <laughs> angle that the icons were not actually part of the desktop Ooh. wallpaper. Now it's very very clear to me. Pretty. They are trying to save power with uh, some of the sensors. Like um, yeah. it's sensing the the 5s is sensing when it's sort of like put away somewhere and right. not hasn't moved lately and it actually yeah. scales back the amount of polling it does on the network because it figures nobody's hold, looking at me nobody's holding me i might as well slow down a it little bit do so that. they are trying yeah. to be gonna, more I'm active gonna, at that stuff. i'm not going to keep looking for wi-fi hotspots if i'm not moving around right. all, all that yeah. kind of stuff I, I i really think that i mean i, I hold to what i was saying a couple of weeks ago that uh, this is, I think the 5S and iOS 7 are exciting things today, but they're even going to be more exciting five or six months from now, both when the apps come out that are really optimized right. towards this hardware and this operating system. And also when Apple comes out with whatever they might be coming out with to really exploit that M7 coprocessor. Because that's, right. I, I, it's, it's good that you're also holding up the Moto X. I think that the two, the two of the most exciting phones of the year or the greatest features that I've never seen before, before 2013, are all due to an ability to have a processor that does nothing but maintain an awareness of what context, right. yep. what physical context is the phone in right now. And the ability to say, hey, I'm being taken out of a pocket. I should do go into a slightly lower power mode right now that will just give someone a piece of information that will cause them to say, okay, no need to wake up the CPU. I can put this right in back in my pocket now. So that's this. Is, I think there's going to be some exciting stuff coming in 2014. So everybody the in the chat that. room wants to talk about the, the compass being off. Like, is that a big mm. deal? No, it's <laughs> it's it, it, So the digital compasses are never, ever right. They're, they're always, you know, <laughs> they've been terrible. You used to have to write, fling your hand in a figure eight all the time. The iPhone 5S is consistently different than the previous iPhones by about two degrees, three degrees on the level and a few degrees on the compass, which is probably, you know, software cal uh, right. calibration fixable. It's just differently wrong than all the other. That's bad, though, if you're using the level to hang pictures because all your pictures will be tilted. <laughs> but yeah. as long as they're Don't tilted do that. the same, Leo. <laughs> although although uh, if, if, it, if it helps at all, the top and the side, they're still a perfect right angle. So if you want to use it as a tri-square when you're doing some framing, it does work that for that. still work. Exactly. Yeah. The one thing I really love, Leo, is that they're doing this thing almost like just-in-time multitasking because for a long time in computers they would just multitask all the time and now they're getting so smart they right. can say oh leo checks the news in the morning yes leo yes. doesn't care if we're on all the time or on right. two seconds before he picks it up as long as it's there when he picks us up there's a huge yeah. amount to be gained by by intelligent uh, software and yeah. intelligent design well I I ios 7 enables some of that stuff that we that has frustrated like my i have a kindle and the physical Kindle, you get the newspaper, it is auto-delivered over Wi-Fi in the morning, duh. So that if you walk out the door with your Kindle and get on the bus and there's no Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter if the paper is there. Yeah. Well, now with iOS 7, that, that's never been possible on the iPad or the iPhone for the Kindle because it doesn't, it, it's just an app. It can't right. do that in the background. And now with iOS 7, it, they don't do it yet, but I assume that Amazon will update it to do that. And there, you know, all sorts of apps that you you think like Instapaper, a Pocket does this right now. Where if you add a, a story to Pocket, I love that. The Pocket app on iOS seven automatically loads it. You don't have to go there and wait for it to load in all the stuff you're saving. Right. It saves it. If you walk out the door and lose your connection, you got all the stuff. So the, Andy's exactly right. In the next six months, we're going to see a lot of really cool apps that are enabled by the stuff that's in iOS seven. Yeah. Um, I did read, and I thought this was great. Of course, uh, this week was the second anniversary of the death of Steve Jobs, a great right. loss. And the New York Times ran a, a, what I hope will be the first in a long series of articles by one of the original iPhone designers about the behind the scenes. If you haven't read it, it was in Sunday's Times. Unbelievable. Fabulous. And what it really underscored for me uh, is how tough this was to do. <laughs> the um, golden path. It, 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 just amazing. And so here we are. It's only, what, six years later. And uh, we, we well, you know, I really ought to know what time I wake up. Yeah. For crying out loud, the way he describes, I mean, let me find the article because it's such a yeah. great article. The way he describes, um, uh, you know, just the issues 
The yeah, radios didn't work. Nothing worked. In fact, there was a, go what you said, golden path? Is that what yeah. they called it? Yeah. yeah. You had to do everything in a precise order or the phone right, would crash. Right, or it would down. crash. There was a sequence. Because keep in mind, that this is a cutting-edge product, the likes of which had never been seen before. There were only and, six of them. And they're demoing it yeah. six more than six months before it's done. Right. I mean, we that that was that product because I held one of those, and I think Andy did too. When, yeah. And there were six of them, it turns out, and it worked. But you know, they were ready to spring into action if you did anything wrong because they I was, were. I do remember they were that. just tied together said, with bailing wire. No, don't. Yeah. yeah, I was I was I was surprised Let me to find read the about original that because. Article. This is not the article of the show. Let's show the New York Times article. Let me find that. Anything that seemed particularly I, dangerous, they had removed from the demo iPhone yeah, that the, I got. The only, the only thing, the only thing that I tried to, I, I was trying to there remember what my experience. I had about what a half hour to forty five minutes in that in that yep. room with them, and I, the only thing that I tried to use that did, was not functional was the Notes app. Because that right, was, it was a hey, screenshot. It was, it, was, it was just a screenshot. <laughs> but the th but the thing was, I, I think that they also didn't. Uh, the, the phone app also didn't work. But it wasn't as though I couldn't use the web. It wasn't as though I couldn't drill down into apps. So it was. But but this is not the case of just somebody behind closed doors who they're already trusting to not be a bozo sure. and say, oh, well, the, the hardware that I used six months before release uh, was a little bit buggy and make a big issue of it. But it, it's, but the, it really does impress you as how much, how much was set to go wrong. They even, the, one of the coolest takeaways of that article was that they had actually hard coded the signal strength to always read five bars <laughs> because yeah. they did, they did not want to take a risk that anybody would say, oh, well, I was getting two and a half, two, those, two or three bars in the middle of San Francisco. Those snarky journalists well, sitting whole, in the audience. The whole radio subsystem would crash occasionally. Yep. And so you would yeah. see it, would it lose. It would reboot. You would yeah. see yeah. it lose all the bars. And yep. they were announcing this partnership with Singular, and they didn't want to offend right. people so, there. So, and, so full yeah. credit here. This is Fred Vogelstein, who's a contributing editor at Wired, and it is an excerpt from a book called Dogfight, How Apple and Google Went to War and Started a Revolution. And so credit, I'm going to read that book when it comes out. Great reporting. He's a, he's, it's an interview with Andy Grignon, or Gr Grignon who uh, was a, a, one of the chief engineers of the radios inside the first mm -hmm. iPhone. Um, just... You and it talks the about best, the, it you left talks out about the best part. They were they were drinking in the yeah, audience the as their as a their shot items every time the demo worked. Yeah, because as <laughs> each engineer, when his part cleared and was fine, he would be handed the flask and he would take a drink. Yeah. Oh, the, the, oh, the the other the other cool thing was they knew that. Remember, this was not like a, in, in town hall. This wasn't like 150 people. This was four thousand people. Macworld, Macworld Expo, and, yeah. yeah, right, exactly. And so they actually so they're trying to figure out how how are we going to be able to get content, get access to Wi-Fi and make all this work with 5,000 people like in this noisy environment, they wound up hacking their own, their own code so that it appeared to the the airport base station to be a Japanese phone <laughs> because... Because you could do channel, you could do channel, uh, higher channel Wi-Fi channel channels 11. that aren't available and used uh, in the in US, US, yeah. So Crazy. the FCC, they, they probably had to pay like a $500 fine to the FCC for that one, but <laughs> probably what probably probably money well spent. By the end, Grignon wasn't just relieved, he was drunk. He brought a, <laughs> he'd brought a, gl a flask of scotch to calm his nerves and so there we were in the fifth row or something, engineers, managers, all of us doing shots of scotch. But, you know, meanwhile, we're all sitting back a little bit, not yep. noticing this. Every segment of the demo, there were about five or six of us, and after every piece of the demo, the person who was responsible for that portion did a shot. They did not expect this to go flawlessly. And by no. the way, Steve, as we all know, if something doesn't go flawlessly, he'd say things like, you're effing up my company. He'd sure. look right at you during the rehearsals. You're effing up my company. Well, and on stage at Macworld in New York, he did. Uh, he took a digital camera that wasn't working and like literally flung it into the <laughs> audience. <laughs> but uh, let me get the takeaway from me from this was if you don't have a Steve Jobs, you don't have an iPhone. Because this, what they were trying to do was so hard, right. so impossible. Everybody had told Jobs, you can't do this. We can't do this. Jobs said, I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to deal with phone companies. But he literally, I feel like, muscled this through. He He's, willed it into existence. He willed it into existence. And I don't know if any other company or any other guy could do this. There are very, maybe a Jeff Bezos... There are right. very few people who could say, no, I know it's impossible and we're still going to do it. Well, and to have the restraint to not do it until it was close enough that the technology to make that phone existed. Because I was thinking about this. They were talking about doing something that was more based on the iPod. And I thought, what would the world have been like if Apple had come out with its first iPhone in 2004 and it had been based on the iPod and it had been using that Pixel OS been the and Motorola it would have been kind of crappy. Yeah. And... <laughs> 
and it would not have been a good experience. No. And they they restrained they themselves off. until 2007 when they were ready. And I think about that. You mentioned Jeff Bezos. I mean, it's a question about something like the Kindle. Would the Kindle, I mean, the Kindle's done okay, but would they have benefited from having the restraint to say, I know you're excited about this, but it's not good enough. Wait, right. let's wait two more years. It's such a hard thing to argue mm -hmm. that we're going to stay out of the market and continue spending money building this product until it's ready. And that's but clearly you, what happened with the iPhone. The, that's, that's, that's not quite the same thing, though. I mean, the, what, what I, there, I think that the ideal company has a mixture of both approaches. I like the fact that people who are early, not just early adopters, but early believers, early people who have an early belief in digital books are willing to spend close to $400 for an ebook reader with not a whole, not a huge library of titles. Uh, and they were the people who were able to just, just like the owners of, of, uh, of Tesla's and, and, and Chevy Volts these days, they are the people who enable the next, establish the credibility so that when the next more practical device comes along, more people can get on the, get on board. And right now we've got a Kindle exactly as good as the first one that costs 69, 70 bucks. So I'm not sure if, if they had waited for it to be perfect, they would have had a really beautiful $300 device that maybe would not have been able to compete in this marketplace. Well, I'm, I'm not that, saying wait till be perfect. Perfect, but I think that you can do damage to a product category if you come out with something bad. I think the Newton, okay. a, although it was a good, an interesting product, did some damage to the handheld category. And I bought the first Kindle and I returned it. It was terrible. I think they should have probably waited a year. I'm not saying wait till it's perfect. The Kindle's still not perfect, but mm. I, you know, I think I just wanted to use that as an example that I think the iPhone story would have been very different oh, if absolutely. they had come up with a weird iPod-based iPhone two or three years earlier. And I like that they waited, and I think that's because Steve Jobs just, you know, he had that. Sense of timing, and he knew what he wanted, and it wasn't ready. Yeah. And this well, is not to deprecate the getting... brilliant engineers who created this thing, mm -hmm. but without a general to say we're going over that yeah. hill, those engineers don't do it without somebody who collects them into a body. And and, and well, he was doing this. He was taking people. Hadn't been done. I mean, they were for them to do that. That that required somebody to say, "I don't care. We're going to do multi-touch." You got it. You yeah. got. If you haven't read this article, read this article. It will give you a new appreciation, A, for what the iPhone is, for the revolution that it created, and for the man who made it possible. And I think there's no denying the, the It's powers. amazing when you talk to the people who were involved at the time, the combination of relentlessness and patience. Like, he yeah. would just wait and wait, but he wasn't yeah. sitting there waiting. He was forcing you to do better and better each time, and he was willing to drive you that hard, but wait for you to get there at the same time. And that seems to have been a very good combination. Yeah. You remember that picture that Steve showed at the, uh, at the keynote he said, "We made an iPhone. It looks like this, and uh, and everybody laughed. But it. But what we're learning from this article is, in fact, it could have looked like yeah, that. They, they were looking to an iPod using the click wheel to dial. Those are some of the early Apple phone. I, there were Apple phone rumors." And we see why, as they were actually working on this stuff. There were Apple phone rumors for like five or ten years before the iPhone came out. And one of the strong rumors was this. Somebody obviously had gotten wind of a click wheel based right. iPod phone, which would have been really weird. But <laughs> that was a Tony know. Fidel model, right? The big disagreement between Tony Fidel and Tony exactly wanted this. Was Tony was the designer, iPad. the yeah. original guy behind the iPod. Right. So naturally, he said, I want this to be he an iPod. He thought it would be an extension of the iPod. Who is the guy doing this with the iWatch? Is it, is it uh, Johnny Ive? Because you need that guy. And I don't think it's Tim Cook. Bob Mansfield? Is it Bob Mansfield? Well, he's gone now, isn't he? Or is he? I don't think oh, there's think one guy, right? It's you need, no, but you need that guy. You need the guy well, who no, has we, the, the respect of the engineers to go in there and say, mm. you're effing up my company. <laughs> and instead of the guy <laughs> saying, well, F you, I'm out of here, saying, you're right, Steve. I'm going to work harder for you. I, th I, think more, I think more than that, you need a leader who can absolutely convince the people who are pulling 90 hour weeks and are not not uh, attending their kids recitals and their their soccer games that what you're doing is a really really important thing that the entire company's future is based on you're this is not an world. idea that we're playing with this is something we're actually making and we're the, either going to and your work will either lead to one of our greatest successes of 2014 or one of the reasons why in 2015 we were not able to compete with other companies right, right. now if you can do that that's that's what will get people to phone home and say I'm sorry Start dinner without me. I got to work another three hours. I don't even think it's, it's that. I don't think it's the company. I think you have to say you're going to change. It's what what Steve said to John Scully. You're going to change the world. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if that no? will work twice. That universe is today. Also, see, not not only that was it. You'll 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 change the world, but you'll change the world. And look at this big truck full of money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I I have to. I maybe it's just me, but I think that the really good people are not motivated by bucks. Not motivated by transforming the company, 
but might be motivated by creating a product that changes the world, that makes a huge difference. That is the best, to me, that's the best motivator, and the best yeah. people are the ones who are going to be motivated by that, and that's the I ones think, you want. I think, you're, I think you're very, very close. I think it's more like people want, everybody wants to do something that matters, okay? It doesn't, mean, doesn't even have to be a revolutionary device that changes the entire planet. It's where you create something that is has not been done yet, that is that needs to have been made, and that is an opportunity that you will not get in any other job at any other company. You are here at Apple right now with the resources of this incredibly creative company and this company that will take risks on future forward thinking to do this one thing. And maybe you're not going to be you're not going to still be at Apple 5 years from now, but the first generation watch or the first generation cable box or the first generation whatever they're working on will always be a landmark moment in history. And again, maybe you know how many people are still using their original iPods, their original iPhones now? Not many. So that that the 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 influence of that one product is is certainly over and done with. Uh, but it's important to believe that what you're doing right now, right now matters and is important. And that's an opportunity that few companies can give you. And Apple is one of those few companies in tech right now. Mm -hmm. And I hope that there's a guy who's, at, who's, who's there who can, can also motivate. <laughs> it's not enough to know that. By the way, this is not <laughs> going to change the world. Fox News shrinks <laughs> humans. <laughs> no, no, it's not the way broadcast news is presented to the people. And it's in this Leah, where are our giant tablets? This is the straight, uh, this, of all no, the things like that I people. saw when I was uh, on this trip, it was, this was the weirdest one. This is. I thought that was a Photoshop. I honestly did. I, I thought, thought it was an onion. I thought it was the onion. Me too. So this is Fox News. What's his name? Shepard Shepherd Smith. Shepard Smith. Smith. Yeah. Is getting a new show. It's not for all of Fox News. It's just for Shepard. Yeah. He's got, a, this is their new set. They've built a new set. And the set involves 55 inch. Yeah, they're, they're what used to be Surface. It's these Microsoft Windows-based touch... Do we know that? Is it it's Surface? It's a giant Microsoft touch screen Windows 8, yeah. running Windows 8. Yeah. It is the most... I feel so sorry for the people <laughs> using this thing because, well, if you if you take a look at it, it's 1080p. It's not uh, 4K. I right. mean, so the Twitter feed is huge, and some guy has to sit like a foot away from it. And there are four tweets on the screen at once. <laughs> I, think, I, I, I honestly think... I honestly think Look at this guy! Proud. Look at this guy! This is crazy! <laughs> A, this, a year from now, if you visit like a friend, like in the like who works like at Fox in the studios, you will see like every third cubicle will have like a 58 inch display because okay, we turned on that studio and whoever wanted one for 50 bucks, just get it out of the studio. <laughs> Let, let's live down this shame. I give it a month. I give it a month. Yeah, the it, tab the tablet thing is uh, it, it it it's weird because it, they they do look like tiny humans. I mean, I think that's the big is, problem there. And by the way, oh. these are actors. I can promise you, having been on many a network news set. These are not real people. They don't use real people because real people do things like pick their nose or get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of a broadcast. These will be actors. And so nobody's really going to be using these giant screens. The people in the back using real computers with mice and keyboards. Right. And by the way, this is my argument against touch computing in general. If you really want to get work done, give me a keyboard and a mouse and a screen that's at arm's length and this big because... That's crazy. So the part of this that I like, and, and Clayton Morris, who's a really yes. good guy, has, works here. was talking about it, and he's a co-worker of Shepard Smith. He said that that one of the things that it'll allow Shepard Smith to do is sort of call up his own information, basically be his own producer, his own yeah. director. So he gives a little demo So good for that. him, but the people in the background, it's just so strange. Show this somewhere. This is... This is it's ludicrous. <laughs> Touchscreen computers, any one of which we can it put looks like on an Austin the air movie. at a moment. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly we it. It is so crazy. And then he hey, shows... Hey, Mom, look at me. I got a tablet. There's a demo look, coming up in a bit where, my where Shepard shows how he... Can yep. manage the news using a simple device that looks oddly like a television remote control. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me let me let's get to this here. I I don't know how anybody's going to watch this and take this seriously, but I, I and it has nothing to do with Macintosh. But when I saw this, I said, "This is this is crazy." It could be running away. This is television. Really this crazy. is mainstream TV trying to be hip and cool. Well, our brain wants to think that those are iPads. Yeah. Except then there's a guy sitting yeah. in front of it and. The Laputian iPads. What are we seeing? Yeah. Um, Rob Dignaggian iPads. Rob, <laughs> whoa, they're getting a little Gulliver's Travel in there, huh?
Had to do it. Yep, little Willem yeah, Dafoe. No, not Willem Dafoe. That's the other guy. <laughs> no. Daniel. Okay, wait a minute. Watch, watch. Shepard's going to use his... This is a piece of equipment that's been installed and never been yeah, it's used on like television before. But it allows me to manipulate this 38-foot-long video wall. We call it the what? clicker. Uh, for instance, I can take <laughs> this picture and bring Woo! it over here. Ooh. Take this lady who's been evacuated picture from a hurricane picture. zone and move it over here. She took that lady who's been evacuated from her hurricane zone and, and moved her right... Give Look at you that! An idea of what's happening in a certain area. <laughs> we'll use all of these. All right, that's enough. Thank it's you, showbiz. Shepherd. It's showbiz. It's showbiz. And and they say the reason they're doing it is because there's a whole new world of television viewers who don't watch linearly. They're on Twitter. They're doing this. They're doing yeah, that. Yeah, but then they're watching linearly a guy who's that's flipping around. And by the I'm way, not sure that premise really really follows. That's not who's watching Fox News. It's all little old ladies who are going to go. Why are those little people on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just like they do this for the presidential elections, right? Where there's a big touch screen yeah. and somebody's like... Or Jessica Yellen on the flipping CN around. CNN yeah. 3D holograph. She's just in the other room, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> 3D... Jessica's in... That's, it's I mean, showbiz. It's showbiz. Tony and not Stark's that we would ever do that. that. But. <laughs> it's, too, it's, it's kind of too bad, though. Step, stepping, back, stepping back a little bit. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if they, instead of having like the, the 5,000 fingers of, of Dr. T or whatever... <laughs> they, they had a, like a four people with actual 4K screens where they can actually be creating, using them to their advantage, where here's a large touch screen, which is a huge surface in which if they got information they need to keep over there, they access it, then put it over there. Uh, they, they keep pictures, they keep video, they have content, they have access to pretty much whatever they want. Wouldn't it be kind of interesting if that were in the background and people could see people using multi-touch in a very effective and productive way for time-critical sort of stuff? Wouldn't that kind of have an influence on how people think about computer? computing but of course but as it is right now it's just a stupid blown opportunity this this is this is something you'd get like in, from the sky mall catalog that they're using right now <laughs> this is not a good ambassador for multi-touch <laughs> he, he shepherd says leave we leave we, those glasses at home you've got your <laughs> giant ipad here at the studio shepherd says we call these big area touch screens no they call them big <laughs> ass tablets but yes. you want to say the word ass on uh, nightly news Wow. Um, all right, I had nothing to do with Apple. I want to talk about OS X Mavericks and a lot more. You're watching Back Break Weekly. Yes, I'm back in studio. Sorry. Derailing discussions once again. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com from Macworld and PC World, of course. Mr. Jason Snell. Hola. Well, now, see, if I go, if I do it now, hello's okay, but if I, what, how, ciao. If I do it now, is it going to be no. in Italian? No. God, I, that was it, a giant. That 55-inch screen. It, <laughs> it knows that's a U.S. Uh, I got to wait. I got to wait until it says, no, I don't. No, do it now. Do it no, now. See what happens. it'll be in Chinese. Wait a minute. No. Okay, okay, I'm going to wait. Hello, that's my language. Hola. Hola. Do it. Do it? Really? Oh, see, it, didn't, oh, it wouldn't just, even let ruined me. ruined everything. It always goes back to hello. It does know I'm American, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. I, don't, I have to say, if you do the iOS 7 upgrade, or if you haven't done it, and you're doing it to existing material, to existing. Oh, good. Now let's do it in Arabic. Oh. You ha you do have to, and this is very frustrating. It's as if it's a brand new hardware. Not so always. No. Not it, always? It did on all my stuff. 7.2 didn't do that to me. Yeah, it, it doesn't no, no, when no, it no, needs no, no, no. to. The first time it goes to yeah. iOS 7, it yeah. does that. Yeah. Not 7.0.2. Right. But when you, but I'm just saying, if you're going from 6 to 7, be prepared because you're basically going to be having a brand new machine in effect you've got to well, do well no new no well new authentic authentication i mean if apps or apps and data that are in place will remain in place no yes yeah, yeah so but you have to go through a whole bunch of stuff to get yeah, it going it's, again it, well, it's, not, it's not as onerous you have to you have to sign in you have to reestablish that the re reconnect really the, the, yeah. to your uh, to your iTunes store account yeah. uh, and also reaffirm that yes i do want uh, i do want location services to be turned on yes i do want this this other service to be turned on it wasn't bad also, maybe this is not if, – if, when you think about it, maybe it's kind of okay that your first introduction to iOS is not, boom, here is, uh, here is your operating system for your phone. It is, we're going to walk you through some screens. We're going to sort of desensitize you to this, these, the, the, this new font and this new color scheme. We will try to get you to not freak out by the fact that the next button is not a button – that is a highlighted and, and 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 shadowed. It is actually just the word next in the upper right hand <laughs> corner of the screen. One thing I do would I do appreciate, and although I don't know if everybody will appreciate this, is uniformly everybody who gets a new iOS seven device has to create a password code, right? You cannot skip. I can't skip this step. You you have to create a new passcode. Oh wait a minute, no. There it says don't add thing. passcode, yeah, you, but it's in little. You're, you know, you're, you're strongly encouraged. Strong, to. and I think yeah. that's probably good, right? 
You can turn off locking if you don't want to do that. But um, I think that that's a nice pro security step. All right. So you're right. It's not, it's not, uh, I, it wasn't too bad. I was able to do it while I was talking. <laughs> it does t tell you the spotlight has moved. That's probably the single biggest point of confusion. You can't swipe left anymore. You have to just kind of. Yeah. I think that's that, a mistake. People there are few things. There are few buttons. Yeah. And people there are what? a few things I think are mistakes. That's, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Randy. I'm sorry. No, they missed their tweet and Facebook buttons on notifications. Oh. That's the biggest complaint I've been getting. Really? Yeah. I, huh. I never thought they belonged there, but apparently once you give someone something, taking it away is bad. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. All right. We're going to take a break uh, and come back. We can talk more about that if you wish. We could talk about other things, of course, and the new Johnny Ive Leica camera. Are you bidding, Leo? How much? We'll check. It is. It's for a good cause. Um, our show today brought to you by Gazelle.com. <laughs> Couldn't have been better timing. If you want one of these and you got one of these, that's when you need to know Gazelle. If you've got an old iPhone and you want a new iPhone, if you've got uh, some other phone, a Galaxy S4, and you want to get a, a new iPhone 5S, you got to go to G-A-Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Gazelle. Dot com. It's the fast and easy way to sell your existing gadget and get cash. I mean, it's really kind of cool. I've been telling everybody to go to Gazelle uh, for the last couple of months, knowing that a new iPhone was on the way. I'm pretty sure, although we'll ask this uh, esteemed panel in a moment, that there's a new iPad on the way. Now might be a good time to get a price for your old iPad. You get paid in cash payments fast, but here's the point. You can get this quote right now. And it's good for 30 days. So if Apple does release an iPad in the next 30 days, if they're going to, it'll be in the next 30 days. Look at that, 200 bucks for that third generation. It's an old one, 32 gig Wi-Fi, 200 bucks. That's pretty good. Is that what you have, Chad? We got to get you a new one. That's what I have, yeah. Man, you need a new iPad, dude. Not, not even 3G or anything. Golly. Go to gazelle.com, find your item. They buy even broken iPhones and iPads. They'll buy Samsung, BlackBerry. They'll buy... Windows 8, Surface RT tablets even. Don't know where they sell those. Uh, but <laughs> they'll find somewhere. And uh, and then you get a payment in cash or PayPal. Or if you use Amazon a lot, this is the best deal. Uh, get it. And oh, wow. For that iPhone 5, 16 gig, 270 bucks. That's going to get me the new iPhone. That's awesome. Uh, you can get, a pay, get, it, get paid in uh, the Amazon gift card that gives you an extra 5%. So what's your iPhone worth? What's your iPad worth? Take a minute. Go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now because I can guarantee you it's not getting more valuable. That's one thing I do know. These things do not get more valuable in time. Gazelle.com. Subsidize your habit. So the new Johnny Ive Leica doesn't... You know, I don't know if this is a good idea. I think Johnny should... Uh, I, the thing you reason you spend a lot of money on a Leica is you want it to look like a Leica. Mm, but if there's only one of them, and only you can have it, and you it can is, prevent your friends from having it. There's only one, huh? Why isn't is it, it a one-off? I want to bang my internet. Oh, I know why. I'm using Chrome. Let me go back to Safari. <laughs> I, I used Chrome on the trip, but I don't want to use Chrome anymore on this. Do you find that I, uh, Macs don't work well with Chrome? Or no, I know a lot of Mac users who really like it doesn't. Chrome it doesn't work for me for I, some I reason. I prefer it. It's, 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 uh, my, my Mac got so much more stable when I switched to Chrome as my primary as opposed to Safari. Really? I use Safari, but I use Chrome as my backup. Ah, oh, it's just me then. But for some reason, there it is. Oh, that's pretty. What did Johnny do to this different? It actually looks like a Leica. Oh, it's got uh, right. texture. <laughs> Aluminium. Aluminium <laughs> and texture. What you don't what you don't know is that the, that entire camera, including the lens, is actually milled out of a single block of aluminum. Uh, it, it so the, it, it it actually kind of looks like maybe a Mac Pro with the uh, little cheese grater. Uh, the laser laser machined aluminum body, an anodized aluminum ooh, shell. Ooh, that is pretty. Once they're lasers and aluminum, that is. Uh, if Johnny Ive were ever to be a James Bond supervillain, and it's to benefit have a laser. product red and some aluminium. And how much? So the deal is, it's just as an auction. Or do you have, or what's the deal? Anybody know? Auction. I'm, yeah, I, I believe it's a one-off, isn't it? But how do I get it? Oh, it is an, I think it is an auction. Oh, that's pretty. You know what? Johnny's got chops. The dude can do it. He's very employable. 
If anybody ever wants a good designer, I can highly recommend Sir Johnny Ive. Sir Johnny. Yeah, it's, it's something something occurred to me that when when Prince Charles like was uh, like got his title, they 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 made for him this very nineteen sixties design crown. And so we're probably gonna, you know, we're 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 gonna we're gonna see like uh, uh, the the next generation need a new crown. What if they got Johnny Ive to design an actual like crown for oh. the next king? Oh, the crown that jewels. Was, that was I've awesome. re we've reimagined what a crown could be. <laughs> it, is the, it is the lightest crown ever made, shaving over eighteen pounds. Given that we're no longer stealing jewels from our for, former <laughs> former country. <countries. laughs> It'll be auctioned at Sotheby's November thirteenth to raise money for. Product project uh, product red for the global fund to fight AIDS tuberculosis and uh, I thought I said marijuana but it's malaria. Uh, oh wow, 561 of them, nearly a thousand a total of 561 models and nearly a thousand prototypes to create one camera, and Bono has already praised it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So we don't know what it's going to go for. But if you want to get it, go to Sotheby's on uh, November 23rd. I just might point out my birthday is November 29th. <laughs> Bring your checkbook. What do you get for a guy who has anything? Everything. You get him a Johnny Ive Leica. OS 10 Mavericks Solid Gold, baby. We're talking the Gold Master. Um, it's out for developers. Yeah, if it means it's coming soon. Any day now. What do you think? What's your bit? What's your prediction? That's by the way. That's five days ago it came out. So yeah. I'm, I'm still catching up. You understand? Um, Ships with Mac Pro. You think? Yeah, I figure Apple's event. Now, did they did they slipstream new iMac? Somebody told yeah. me that. Yeah, they they're did. new new uh, iMac speed bumps that are with Mountain Lion. Okay, with Mountain Lion. With Mountain Lion. So, so uh, they, didn't, they didn't wait for Mavericks for those. But to me, when I heard that. It sounded like they were clearing the decks for a... Because last year, remember, they had updated everything yeah. that they hadn't updated, which means everything but the iPhone. Right. And this big October announcement on October 23rd. So that means they're not going to do that. Or they wanted to get the iMac, big deal, not a big deal. We want to do Mac Pro, Haswell MacBooks, yeah. and a Retina iPad Mini. Maybe if they if they do the Macs and the iPad together, which they might not. I mean, the Mac Pro is such a strange product that they could... They could do a small event or no event at all and and do that then. I mean, that's the question. Do they want to mix the Mac with the mm. iPad? I, they made so much. I don't so know. Much I mean, they've been buying ads in movie theaters for the Mac Pro. This is not a small thing. But, but, also, but also it depends on what kind of message they want to send for the Innovate company. Innovate my they, ass. Because, hmm. exact, that's exactly what I'm getting at. I mean, it's a really weird, real, super, super powerful. It's, it is a velocity cannon of uh, in both physical form and in processing power. And if they want to simply say, oh, and uh, we have a Mac, our MacBook Airs, which look much, uh, our, our MacBooks look much like they did last year, but they have new processors. And we have a new this, that, and the other that the, the new uh, new iPad that looks much the same. Only we have a new, better processor. If they can say, "Oh, and by the way, here is our Velocity Ion Cannon computer of a desktop." <laughs> I want it. I it's the name. Pray, pray we do not alter our bargain further. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, Renee Ritchie, rumor master. What have you heard? <laughs> I thought it was awfully quiet there in Montreal. Renee has been uh, constrained by the Canadian government from speaking. Go ahead. No, nope. you're just, muted, Renee. Renee, did you sit on something? Sorry, I, I somehow got. <laughs> I was being prevented. From, no, I, I mean the the new iPad. I think is going to be a big deal because it gets the new casing design. It's going to be lighter. It's going to have smaller bezels. It's going to look different. And when Apple makes products look different, um, usually they're much they get much more attention than when they just spec bump them internally. You know, it's the tick to the TikTok cycle yeah. gets them all the excitement. And then the Mac Pro is going to be a huge deal, too, just because it, it's exactly what Andy said. It's Apple showing that they can make the hypercar still, that they can do the big, amazing thing in technology. So if you have an October event that has the iPad 5, the Retina iPad mini and the Mac Pro. And by the way, we're Haswell bumping, you know, the rest of the lineup. I think that's a really exciting event. Is uh, is it possible they won't have an event this year? No, the, I think they'll definitely have an event. I, I my skepticism is only about the um, the Mac Pro and whether they do it as a part of that event or they do another little Mac Pro something in November. Uh, Mac Pro is ready. much less of a holiday season kind of product. 
So they could put it off. It, it doesn't mean they will necessarily, but they could they put could. it off. But I think that they said it would be out this the year. iPad though, didn't and, they? and iPod Touch, yeah, out they, this year. But yeah, this, you know, again, it's not a holiday. They don't need to fill the channel for the holiday. Well, they're so they could announce it December thirty first. No, but they could do it. They could do it in November or even December if they wanted. A third to. Third event, maybe. But, but or the, they could pack it all in in in, right. uh, in late October. I mean, it depends it, it on how much of our money they want to report in the holiday quarter. <laughs> It does feel like a good thing to put on stage, given that they're going to have a lot of new tools and a lot of production stuff that has never been seen before. I think the, the Mac Pro is going to demo really, really well. If you think about the sort of companies they will invite on stage and say, we gave Mac Pros to a few selected developers to see how they could they could make best use of the exciting new possibilities of it. And here is our, you know, is our liaison for the NSA who can now, who can now do <laughs> keyword searches on 100,000 phone calls a second instead of just 10. Well, Mavericks, they can make a big deal about Mavericks too, right? They yeah. can say, here's Mavericks, it's right. great. Yeah. Here's the Mac Pro, it's great. This is, you know, we've also speed bumped these other things. The Retina MacBook Pro is so great. And then, you know, whether they do that and then also pivot, ooh, pivot, that's an exciting word, and say, <laughs> we're going to talk about the new iPads too, or whether they kind of like do that in, in separate chapters. Uh, there's certainly a lot to talk about, right? Is Final Cut Pro worth a demo or is it just going to be, you know, made aware for the Mac Pro? I mean, if they've got new versions of their Pro tools, they probably want to show them off. But if they're just uh, made to work with the Mac Pro, then it's not as mm. big a demo. But they're going to want to show off the power of the Mac Pro. And that means they're going to need to do software demos. So that may be where something like Final Cut comes out just because... They've already boasted that the Final Cut stuff is going to be so much better on the new Mac Pro. And so if that's the case, then they're going to want to do the demo just to just to show off the power of the Mac Pro. Because a lot of apps are, are not going to look that different on the new Mac Pro. You, you're going to want the ones that really take advantage of it. Well, you know what my conspiracy theory is, is they're going to bundle Pro apps on this new Mac Pro. Right? So they'll have... That's You're exactly right. Okay. Final Cut Pro. They did just update Logic, so that's not... Right, right, but they could still demo it. I, I mean, they it's not it necessarily all. an announcement so much as just uh, showcasing all the pro yeah, apps. Yeah, this is this is this, this is a pro app, a pro hardware Mac, with pro please. apps, and it's all bundled. I think that makes sense to me, but we'll yeah. see. They have a new version of iWork apps finally. What was the last one, Jason? iWork ninety two thousand nine. Well, they also, remember they also have, they also have iWork in the cloud. No, oh nine version of those apps. Oh nine, yes, yeah, but two thousand nine. Ninety seven, eighty three. <laughs> I work Apple Works. Apple Works. No, I, I work 09 is my current. Yeah. It's as timely yeah. as the day's headlines. It's I work still 09. good. It's fine. You know what they're going to do, though, is uh, they're going to focus on, I predict, just as Microsoft has, on the online portion of this, right? And, they're, and they've done that. And it's I mean, beautiful. They've, got, they've got their web apps and they've got their it's iOS good. apps, but the, the, the Mac apps could probably stand a refresh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. 4K no, displays. Leo, you're going to Apple branded 4K displays with the new Mac Pro. Well, you did see that they hired Jean Francois Mulet. <laughs> oh la la. Oh la la. <laughs> he is a uh, he's from Cable Labs, where he was. Uh, Those are the cable card people. Senior vice president of technology development. Why would you hire a guy like that to head an unnamed no, engineering be, yeah. project? Something big. I think that would be a TV related project. You think it's going to be but a set I agree box. with Renee, though, that, that new Mac Pro, you really want to see a uh, uh, a Retina or 4K or both display uh, as mm. a part of that story. Can they make something, a Retina display that big? They did, well, the 4K is not Retina display, which is, might be an easy out for them because they couldn't do uh, it with the iMacs, right. and the iMacs usually get it first. But 4K, right. the, like, the 2160p is not what a Retina... 27 inch screen would really work out too so it's sort of a an easy out are there uh, i mean i know you can buy tvs at 4k tvs but they're pretty well wait a minute no is there's a cheap one though there's like a thousand eighteen hundred dollar one yeah it goes well, there's a there's really cheap ones but they only go to 30 the refresh rate's only 30 which is horrible yeah and the and hdmi also, has to be updated it doesn't support it you'd have to get the new yeah. hdmi although i presume this mac pro will support Presumably. that yeah and I, I really, I really don't think that any that the Mac Pro is going to be targeted to anybody who is looking to pinch pennies anywhere. <laughs> so I think that I, 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 I'm serious. I mean, that that's where if you want the if they do come up the 4K display for an Apple branded 4K display, there that bezel that that housing is going to cost a lot of money to produce because it people are going to be wanting to buy a premium product with no compromises about it. Here's this is the Seiki 50 inch 4K for under a thousand bucks. Now, obviously, this is a panel that Apple's not would never sell. No, but maybe there's somebody so making broke. this panel at a higher quality. No. With imagine, a Renee's right. Imagine a 27 inch 4K display, <sighs> Thunderbolt display, essentially. Um, I'd buy that. And that'll cost. What does the Thunderbolt display cost? I mean, that's a that's a what two thousand dollar? No, it's a thousand. That's a thousand. 
2000. no, no. I mean the 4K version. So make it 2000. Oh, Big yeah. deal. 2000. You already spending five grand. Five on the, grand on the Mac Pro, yeah. And you get the free, the free. Uh, uh, that's why you want the free uh, Final Cut 10. Sure, just throw yeah, it in yeah, there. Just throw, hey, we're throwing in the software just because you're such a nice. Because I know how it works. 10 grand I, here. I was in the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. I know exactly how this works. <laughs> here, take Aperture. Take Logic Pro. Here, we'll throw some, in Aperture. Have, how, now, some, how much would you pay? Have some tea while we did, while we sit and discuss <laughs> this new monitor exactly. you're buying. Exactly. By the way. DHL is going to come with a bunch of boxes in a few days. Because yeah. <laughs> I fell for it. <laughs> do, you, Ren, Ren, so Ren, do, you really, do you really think 27 inches? I I would imagine that, uh, again, high ex expensive premium product, people who really want to be impressed with a large display, right. something that really shows off, oh, I can't, I, I would never be able to appreciate that level of detail. 30? Uh, on any sort of things. 38? 42? I've heard rumors over 30, but I, I never know what the TV rumors because they're all just so... So many of them. Yeah. yeah. But it's, oh, so is this the Apple TV? No. And, no, a, but it's a panel. No, no, no but it split. depends on what they want to do, right? They could do a smaller one and call it Retina and say it's true Retina on the desktop. Mm -hmm. Or they could do a bigger one and just say it's 4K and touch. Let, you know, make it make it easier. Touch. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Yeah, see, the, the problem no, with the never. rumors about the television is that every time someone has said, you know, and it's always the same person, there's going to be an Apple television, it's like the first rumor about it, it ended up being the 27-inch iMac. So for Apple, they're working on that panel. And, you know, just being a 4K panel does not mean at all a television set. But because you say 4K, it sounds to a lot of people like, oh, Apple's working on a television set again. Right. Well, it's, uh, I, I, I want to see an event. Uh, I, I know you're going to Ireland, but I, I want to see an event this month. Uh, yeah, just, oh, sure. Just don't do it next week. Would you come back? <laughs> If if they do the event next week, I will not. I'll cancel my plans probably. So please make it the week after. But Come if, on, it's Apple. The, if it's the uh, 20, this, if, right? it's, if it's the uh, let's see, 15, 20 second, would that be okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm there. I think we would know by now. We would have invitations. Jason, this is Tim. Uh, hey Tim. Hey, this is Tim. Hey Jason. <laughs> I just want to say, roll tide you know, and come home from. You know, home. I watched the um, I watched the original iPhone. Um, keynote this weekend. Um, oh, me too. Isn't that something? After reading that New York Times article, Isn't that it is a thing to behold, especially now I know that the engineers were getting drunk in the fifth it's row. It's his finest hour. But the part that killed yeah. me is that one of the first sample phone calls is from Tim, and and it's, hey, Steve, this is Tim. It's like, yeah. hey, it's <laughs> and then he he is. is this the one where he calls Starbucks and orders coffee for the yes. entire yeah. For the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and now he, and he prank know. calls the sushi restaurant. Yeah. He says, I don't want to talk to them. And yeah. now we know that the engineer said, no, don't make a call, Steve. Please don't make a call. <laughs> that was the thing that was almost certain to, to crash it. And they went through many, many rehearsals, and it crashed every single yeah. time. And they had they had Phil Schiller out in the audience. I remember and they, this. And they had to fight with the uh, like the feedback that they were getting over. The, he's like holding the phone like this, trying to keep yeah. the feedback out. And, and Johnny was so happy to talk to Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, you. Hi. Just so happy. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Yeah, and it's Bill great Gates, theater. The demos crash every time on shipping products. Yeah. Steve Jobs can demo like the thing that doesn't work at all, makes a call. Bill Gates boots up a four-year-old version of Windows and it crashes. So unfair. It's like the Grateful Dead. You go to a Grateful Dead concert after Grateful Dead concert, and then son suddenly you realize you were at the concert in 1977 in upstate New York that everybody agrees is the best concert ever. We were at, I think, I have to say, I, I think there's no question in my mind, not only Steve Jobs' finest hour, but no, there will never be a keynote, a demo as good as that ever again. That's, that was it. It's the definitive I tech. That was demo. the Grateful yeah. Dead, 1972. Well, I, I I think that the iPhone keynote and the iPad keynote were like mm -hmm. Sergeant Pepper and Revolver. Okay, yes. it's like once okay. you've got I'll those that. two, that's the those are they're, they're they're the two best for two very different reasons, but they're both for the same reason of you see a man who is one of the most powerful yeah. people in the world, one of the richest man in the world, but he is like a 14-year-old kid showing off this <laughs> awesome action figure that he got. I'm going to put a word in yeah. for the for the original iPod event, which was at the Town Hall Little Theater. I, didn't, I, I was, wasn't at I that was at one, that event, yeah, and was that great. was not a guy Jason at the top of this game, right? I was... I was I was watching this guy, you know, and we're like, okay, Steve, try to prove this to us. It's like right. there was huge skepticism. Right. Really, Apple's going to do a music player, and Steve Jobs had to do full salesman. Like, let me explain right. why we even bothered to do that. With the iPhone, it's like, hey, we're Apple, we're going to do crazy stuff like this. With the that iPod, was, it was that was like, like the Beatles at Shea doing? Stadium. It was the beginning. You knew yeah. it was. Please, please me. Please, please. So, uh, did Kutcher nail that in the movie? Because that's how the no. Ashton Kutcher. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> no, and it's not the, and it's not actually that event. It's like some event that may or may not have happened that was to the to the <laughs> in people who worked only. at Apple. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah it wasn't yeah. the same. I have it in my it was pocket. Disturbing. He said it was a great. Yeah. yeah, but but there, you know, they were trying to prove something. And the yeah. iPhone, he was, and he's exactly right. Top of his game. It was Sinatra at the Height Sands. Of his powers. 
Yeah. yeah. Master of his craft at yeah. the height of his powers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also with, with 4,000 people who knew that something amazing yeah. was going to happen. Oh, I'm sitting there with Scott Bourne, who could it was actually floating off of Didn't his Didn't he seat. throw his, his palm trio on the floor and stomp <laughs> on it? As the, isn't that the urban legend? Was it was Scott, Alex Lindsay, I, I was Merlin there, I can't remember, but it was the original Mac Break Weekly crew. We're sitting in a row, and it, I will never forget it. And when he goes, it's an iPhone. It's an internet you device. You getting it? You getting it? it, and it I mean, it was like, what? what? <sighs> <sighs> My brain. <sighs> um, what else? What else? Anything else we want to talk about before we move on to the picks of the week? Oh, Retina. Retina iPad Mini. Is that possible? Renee, you've been poo-pooing it. No, it's not that I'm poo-pooing it. It's that it's a non-trivial thing. And I know when, like, when the Nexus 7 came out, everyone said, well, if Google can do it, why can't Apple? And you have to look very carefully and see that a Retina Nexus 7 has you know, only 75% of the pixels and gets only seven hours compared to 10 right. hours of battery life. Apple's had a prototype for the Retina iPad Mini for almost a year, but they're not going to release it till it has 10 hours of battery life. And that's not... You know, that's not easy to do. Previously, you could have retina, you could have lightness, or you could have battery life, and you get to pick two of them. Right. So the big iPad had battery life and retina, but no lightness. The mini had lightness and battery life, but no retina. And now it sounds like they finally got both the iPad 5 with, you know, the big screen, and it's much lighter now, and the iPad mini, and it's got retina now. So there might be constraints like there were with any new iPhone because retina is really, really hard to do, but it sounds like they've gotten there. Analyst at Canaccord Genuity, I think they should change your name. That's a really bad <laughs> Just name. Between us, uh, says true. that the iPhone 5s is outselling the Galaxy S4 at both AT&T and Sprint. In fact, the iPhone 5c is also outselling the Galaxy S4. Um, I, no question, I, I guess. I, assuming this analyst is, rec is correct, and I see no reason not to think so. That. The iPhone, they did, Apple's done it again. They sold 9 million the first weekend while you were gone, Leo. Really? Is that the number? Yeah. 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 Huge. Holy camoly. But, this, but this, is, this is the same reason why we also ignore the, the numbers about, about how badly the iPhone was being outsold right. during the first week of, uh, of Samsung's latest phone. But it's, they're, they're two very different phones, two de very different markets. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's 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 nothing. Uh, and you we were even, it was even kind of hard to find with the usual doubting Thomases in a cer from certain <laughs> publications uh, saying, denying that the iPhone 5S was anything less than a complete success. Did they break apart? I'm looking at the press release. Did they break it down between S and C? No. Or no. no. So no. it's 9 million total. But they always, every year they report the total amount yeah. and every year they have three models. Does now. anybody have any insight into the uh, success of the C? Is I mean, it's never been out of stock. And maybe that's because it's easier to make. I don't know. They're, yeah, well, I mean, they're also already ramped up from the iPhone 5 and it's right. the same stuff same that was thing. in the 5. It's way easier to make, and they meant it to be a lot. It's not supposed to be the iPhone that people line up for. It's supposed to be the colorful one on the shelf right. that you walk into the store for months and months to right. come right. and just want to buy it. So uh, presumably it's selling as well as the S? Yeah, well, Probably. I don't know because there's, there's this peak of all the frenzied people who are, like, really excited about the S, and those are the people who wait in line, and it's all of us tech nerds who are getting the, the S. I think the C... I hear people talking about it. I hear people getting it for the it kids. In the long people. run, I think the C is going to yeah. sell better than yeah. the S. But in the short I run, agree. you've got this frenzy about the S. And so that's probably sold better so far. The but, S sells to us. Get through, let's get through the holidays and the C is going to be, yeah. be uh, bananas. Yeah, Come on. I, I, I agree. Cool. I agree 100%. I think, I think people are going, people who walk into the store in January, February, March, they're going to see, oh, wow, it's $100 less. Oh, wow. It's available in these really cool colors. Wow. Yeah. And it's running the, and to, when they hold them the both in their hands, they're going to see the same phone running the same operating system and i think that most people are going to go for the 5c and they'll go for the 5s if they have a reason to go for the 5s we were talking about how fast the the 5s is but the the it's not as big a difference between the 5 and the 5s or the 5c and the 5s as it was between the 4s and the 5 mm -hmm. so when you're talking about somebody upgrading they're on a two-year contract they're just coming off they've got a 4s and then and now Leo is licking his phone. I'm just I'm we're... curious if the if my tongue can I <laughs> can I get my tongue? So uh... my, my point is the people who are upgrading um from the four S, the five C is gonna be so much faster than the four S that you know, they're not gonna feel that it's a compromise. Right. And You're even right, the right. packaging is packaged like an iPod. It, it, they oh, want you it? to see the color and oh, they want it to be yeah. there very visual for you. Interesting. Yeah, you, and it's you, also it, down at 49 now at uh, Walmart? Best Buy and Walmart. Yeah. So it's a it's going to be perceived as this value phone. They're going to sell a lot of them. A lot of them. 
Yeah. It, it even the five C even has that uh, the iOS sticker on the front of it yes. that makes it look like it's running iOS. So now I've got like a fourth like uh, window decal on my on, on my sunroom <laughs> here, and those those weren't things you'd see on the iPhone. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, All it's right. A, it's it's not a less expensive iPhone. It's a pop iPhone. Yeah. No, there are a lot of people who seem to uh, believers actually, really in the C after they held it. They said, you know what. This is when pretty, I, when I, pretty sweet. You know, th this morning I had the exact same experience I always have whenever I hand the, the 5C to someone who has never held one before. They are shocked it feels yeah. so solid. They, they are shocked it feels so good because th to the, the the meme is that this is the cheap to produce plastic iPhone. And it's like, no, it isn't. It is a, it is happens made, made out of plastic. It costs $99, but it is a premium phone sold for 99 bucks. Apple's never been in the business of making the super cheap thing that everybody. I mean, right. even when you said all those Nokia God, phones that. that you saw, <laughs> the that the you know Apple's not going to replace most of the people who just want a phone. You know, those those are going to be Android phones, not the iPhone. stitching so, on those iPod socks were phenomenal. Are you training it to recognize your tongue now? I don't yeah. think it's going to work. Hard to get them on Kitty's feet though. <laughs> You're fogging up the screen. Something <laughs> awful there. Probably she would have nipples. Well, right? commercial. No, you just you just turned a, a dot red. You know that, Leo. <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> it won't. It won't get more it's whorls. Really, it's really I can't. It doesn't work because there's no whorls on the tongue. There's no whorls on the tongue. Somebody it in the chat room said it. It will work. It doesn't work with moisture. If the surface is wet, it won't work. Oh. Oops. Leo, you was this, was this, It'll work with your toes. Just, was this just will a ploy it? to make sure that no one else would try to try to take your iPhone five? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've licked it now. You can't have it. Belongs to you now. It's mine. I've put my DNA all over it. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, okay, last call. Any other stories that uh, we should be talking? I'm really, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I just really feel like I've been out of touch. And anything I missed? Nope, this was fun. I think we got it all. Yeah. I think it we got it all. Um, it, somebody says it works with nipples. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Skin, yeah. Any, any anatomy with a pattern on it, you can use. I think unlocking it with your nipple would be inconvenient. You can use your pit bull if you want. My what? Your pit bull, your dog, your cat. <laughs> I never called it a pit bull before. Is that what you call it? <laughs> We're going to take a it's break. <laughs> and, no, let's not. Let's just go on. Let's go on. Let's not stop. I'd like to Is stop. I wish I could stop. Now? <laughs> but I can't. We have no more commercials. So let's get our tip, our uh, uh, products of the week. And uh, who shall I start with? Mm, I think we'll start with Renee Ritchie today. Your your tip, your product of the week, sir. I have two. The first one, you know, Jason mentioned at the top of the show that we're going to be at the Singleton Symposium in Montreal. And even though I live in Montreal, I don't live in that part of Montreal, which means I'm going to be at a hotel for long stretches of time. And the iPhone battery, it's not a Razer Max. It's not one of those giant, you know, things. So what I do is I, I, I bought these last year. I bought two of them. It's the Mophie Juice Pack, um, and oh, it's that, the Duo. That's so powerful. It's got yeah. Two USB. So there's one for me and one for a wayward American friend just visiting Montreal who didn't know that we have the same power outlets that they do. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's American in uh, Canada? Yeah, we use the same power. Different money, wow. same power. Um, wow. So this is great. It'll recharge an iPhone twice. It'll also charge an iPad. So I have two of these with me. And I've also got, I saw this at CES and I didn't get one for a while, but I finally picked one up. It's the Element Case for the iPad mini and I'll hold it further away. And it's it's not a smart cover, but it's made with their typical, you know, sort of uh, race car stylings and it holds the iPad mini very well. It's got a nice interior. It's got a flap on the inside so that you can set it up like a stand. Um, and if you want something that protects the back as well as the front, you know, some people get a lot of scratches on it and they don't like the Millennium Falcon chic that others of us enjoy. It's just a very nice, very solid, very well-made uh, case for the iPad Mini. Very cool. Element case. Yeah. Jason Snell, your pick of the week. Uh, one password four came out. Oh. From Agile Bits, agilebits.com. Yes. yes. Um, it's an, a paid upgrade, or if you've never bought it, it's, you know, spend the money on it. It is, even with Mavericks coming out with some 
password memory kind of stuff. This is my preferred way of storing all my passwords. You have one master password. It locks uh, all your uh, other website passwords away. You don't have to remember them. You just have to remember the, the web master password. Syncs with iPhone, syncs with iPad. Works with Dropbox. If you're on some random computer somewhere, you can actually get, to, there's an HTML <laughs> file hidden inside that you can launch and oh, it's like neat. a web app. Ooh. Really versatile. Um, it'll generate random passwords for you. You can put your credit cards in there. You can put your passport number in there. It's all strongly encrypted and it, really I don't go anywhere without it now. That's where I keep all those numbers that I can't memorize. So um, even with uh, Mavericks coming out with much better support, the iCloud keychain stuff, I really... Um, it works with browser plugins. It's really great. So one password is my choice for staying secure. You don't want to use the same password on every website no. because if it gets cracked in one place, suddenly you're completely yes. uh, insecure. So what you want is different random passwords on all your different sites and then lock it all up with the one password that you use on your Mac or your iPhone. Great product. Love it. Yeah, I love it too. Andy Hanako, your pick of the week. Uh, this is the Click Desk Stand by the Joy Factory for the iPad. Uh, really <laughs> the, nice, sturdy really the Joy desk Factory. Stand. Really? <laughs> the Joy Factory, exactly. Well, they, apparently this is what Joy looks like. If there's Joy missing from your life, look around the house to see <laughs> something like pretty this. pretty cool looking, yeah. Uh, or, or look at the rest of the stuff they've got on their catalog. Maybe maybe you have, you've had it laying around, you just didn't know what to call it. Hey, that uh, looks like something I saw on Fox News. <laughs> Only yeah, exactly. It's like for Andy is giant. Imagine, imagine, imagine like Fox News for squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> zip zip. <laughs> so back back to the pick of the week. Um, it's uh, if if you're using like a, your your iPad for like home use. No, it, it's obviously really good if you're using it like on the desktop. Uh, for like typing, it's, it has a uh, so, but also I've been I have my older iPad in this because I've been using it in my living room as a source for uh, for streaming to uh, my Apple TV. That has two really good features of it. Number one, this mount on the back of it, which allows you to rotate it pretty much like you can have it on the coffee table, then rotate it all the way up so you can be like looking down as you do it, or just put a drink on top of it, which you shouldn't do, but you could do it. Uh, and also, you can rotate it, uh, portrait and landscape. Uh, but the other nice thing about it is that, he said, trying not to drop his iPad, this actually removes completely, leaving behind just a simple, not not terribly thin, but useful shell on your iPad so that, number one, you can actually go to the website and buy other of these little mounts so that you can, I can take this out from the living room and then click it into a mount that I've screwed into like a kitchen cabinet and I'll use this in the kitchen like for, for Food Network stuff. Uh, or... Because they've left this area, this the smart to cover hinge exposed, you can actually take it out, then take it into the car and take it into the work for you with you and just put your smart cover right back on it. So um, it's not terribly cheap. It's $59.99, uh, but it's one of the few tabletop stands, tabletop stands I've seen that is good for a number of different uses that doesn't turn, basically lock your iPad into now suddenly only being a desk-mounted or cabinet-mounted or table-mounted uh, iPad. Cool. That's neat. I have an iPad stand, too. But before I do that, I want to do an anti-pick. <laughs> I blew the fuse in every hotel room I checked into and the ship. <laughs> you were real popular. <laughs> Lisa couldn't believe it. She said, you did it again? I said, yes. And the reason is I kept plugging this in. It's a uh, from Triplight. It's a mobile surge protector. I thought this was going to be great. You know, I had an adapter for it. It's a three-prong plug. But, of course, in, in Europe, they use those two-prong plugs. I plugged it in. I should have looked more carefully. I mean, it says it's a tra it says it calls it a travel adapter. I Maybe even you recommended this, Andy. I can't remember. No, but that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, you're right not to because it's only 110. It is not 220. Uh -oh. So every time I plug this in, <laughs> power surged into it. And for some reason, their giant sparks would fly. And uh, then the huh. room would go dark. And I would have to embarrassingly call the front desk, <laughs> the world's old, lo oldest hotel, and say, um, Scusi, <laughs> El Powero, out O. And uh, fortunately, they were very kind about it. But this, don't bring this with you. It says it works in U.S. and Canada. So you could take it to uh, Montreal with you. Nice. But nowhere else. It's <laughs> Triplight makes great stuff. I should have read it more carefully. Uh, it says it's a traveler, uh, but it's a traveler only if you don't go outside the U.S. <laughs> or Canada. It requires 110 volts. Not uh, It doesn't support 220. I, I found that out on the last day of the trip after blowing the final fuse. I realized 
you know, there might be this. <laughs> Um, anyway, my pick of the week is this. It's an iPad stand, just like yours, Andy. I hope you don't mind. Uh, but I think this is going to bring you more happiness. Um, <laughs> you want your joy. Here it is. There's, if you want joy, this, is the, this, is, uh, this iPad stand is suitable for uh, the place where you probably use the iPad more than any other device. Uh, a special room. <laughs> you know, one of the things in this can New I, York can, Times can article that said is that Steve Jobs wanted a way to use his... Uh, he wanted a way to surf... Well, Anyway, it, it'll hold it better than that. I'm sure if can, like... Can I just say that if you if you feel a, a need for this sort of device and a use for this device, you should be going to a better class of restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you see your toilet paper roll, you've already finished. <laughs> this is... Uh, who's this, who makes this? I don't know anything about it. It just appeared. What? B&H Photo uh, sells this. Uh, it conveniently has a toilet paper roll and an iPad stand on a gooseneck. So, you know... You can read uh, read it in any uh, orientation. Does it does does it have a, a, a supplemental stand for for sterile wipes? <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, there's another more expensive model that hooks into the water and is also a bidet. I think. Yeah. So the Friedman. Model. How much was this? Forty dollars. I cannot wait to get this into my new home. You can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on that. What's what says class like an iPad toilet paper? <laughs> if Archie Bunker were alive today. Now, do, you, do you leave an iPad in it for your guests I would. when they come over? I think that's only fair if you have this in the guest bathroom anyway. The sad news is that now, now we know that Steve really is gone because <laughs> if he were alive and in hiding, he would come out of hiding this. to smash that with your face. <laughs> By the way, the good news is it does run it. iOS 7. So you're, sure. you're, you're good there. The, yeah. the, paper the toilet the paper is flat. <laughs> It is. Yeah, this paper's a little skeuomorphic, but you know I think oh, that's good that's in a toilet paper thing. roll. You, you want a little skeuomorphism there. There it is, the CTA digital pedestal stand mm. with toilet it's paper. Part digital, part analog. <laughs> it's nice to see BNH, uh, you know, branching out. <laughs> Musicians like probably it. use this as a mic stand. I have to tell you, everywhere we went, whenever I saw a band, even uh, even playing classical music, they all had iPads. Everybody used iPads for set lists, for lyrics, for uh, music. It is it's become de rigueur uh, on the uh, performing stage, um, and in the bathroom. Bathrooms everywhere. The acoustics uh, are fantastic. <laughs> different kind of performance stage. Uh, by the way, this is a European roll of European toilet paper. Uh, made to ISO standard 3042. Uh, it feels like sandpaper, and it is. Um, <clears throat> why it, it, do Europeans have tougher butts? <laughs> than a, I, what is it like in Canada? How is your toilet paper up there? We have all <laughs> the American brands. You wouldn't okay, good. Imagine. Okay. Le Charmin. <laughs> Thank goodness that question was about Canadian toilet paper and not Canadian butts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dodged a bullet. I just want everybody to know I'm back. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this fabulous edition of Mac Break Weekly. I want to thank Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times for being here with his squirrel. <laughs> I got to get you that picture of the Trojan squirrel. Actually, it might be on. What, what, what did I take that? might be on here. I want to thank Renee Ritchie of imore.com uh, for being here. What is this yeah. springboard event? Tell me about that. Springboard event? What is it? This thing you're going up there for? Singleton. Oh, Singleton. Singleton. Singleton is a symposium run by Guy English, Luke Van Dahl, and Scott Morris, and, and it's basically in the in the spirit of the Apple Mac developer community. Everyone gets together and talks about. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, Jason keynoted it last year. Yep. Oh. So it's a really classy event. Class. <laughs> um, it's not a classy squirrel. An iPad toilet paper stand. <laughs> but this is a duck from Istanbul, an Istanbul duck. Where is it? Oh. Oh, because I went full screen, screen probably. How about that? Can you do it now? No, I haven't seen your screen for a few minutes now. Oh, oh man. Oh, well. It's a duck. I can verify it's a duck on a wall. <laughs> There's a squirrel here somewhere. Turkish duck. Two form authentication of the duck. <laughs> Jason Snell is my duck verification expert yep. and editorial director at PC World yeah. and, and Mac, Mac World. World. Mac World. It's Mac Break Weekly. Let's talk about Mac Forget World. PCs. And, this listen, is and listen to my podcast, theincomparable.com. Um, Andy and I goes on it sometimes. Really? Renee Ritchie might be on it sometime. Really? And the, what do you talk about on the incomparable? Oh, you know, uh, geeky stuff. So uh, books, TV, movies, sci-fi, fantasy, superheroes, comics, good. all that. The occasional all that nerdy radio stuff. play. Sure, the occasional radio play. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, we did a we did an old time radio uh, radio play. We're actually doing oh, one live at what? Singleton in Montreal. Oh, I would have loved that. I'll send you the link. I love that kind of stuff. I'm still looking for my squirrel. Squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, <Quest. laughs> squirrel hunting. No one's here somewhere. It was a Trojan squirrel. This is why I have a whole separate iPad just for the squirrel pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you probably should. It's high availability. It's probably a good idea. Oh, there it is. But you can't see it. No. Dang, nabbit. If you, is it me? Uh, is it you? Is it life? Well, I, there we go. Got it. Oh, you got Damn. it. But that's not a squirrel now. Well, here's the squirrel. Happened? Here's the squirrel. This is a oh, Trojan man. squirrel. This is the money on shot. the walls of Troy. Just for you, Andy and Otko. <laughs> the Trojan squirrel. Don't By the way, know. that's what Troy looks like. <laughs> that's it. There's no. No Achilles, no. At least they left their rocks stacked very neatly. <laughs> that's, I never get my uh, recycling that nice. I'm gonna. I may be wrong. Check me if I'm wrong. I think that's layer four. <laughs> layer four had better rocks than layer. There you go. There's a squirrel. Isn't layer four chocolate frosting? And then they had the jump. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, somewhere I have pictures of. Oh, this was this was an unfortunate. Uh, sh we, we thought this was our boat, and when we found out it wasn't, we were much relieved. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'll show. Not time to show pictures. We'll do that later. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Mac Break Weekly. We uh, do this show every uh, every Tuesday at around eighteen hundred UTC. I I'm not going to even say West, East, Central. I'm a man of the world now. I'm doing everything in universal coordinated time. Zulu. Zulu. Eighteen hundred Zulu. You figure out what that means <laughs> in your locality. Uh, if you can't watch live, we do love it if you're here, by the way, in the studio. Lots of wonderful studio audience today. Just email us, tickets at twit.tv. We'll make, we'll, you don't, there's plenty, there's lots of room, right? But we'll put a chair out for you and we'll have a nice little iPad stand ready for, <laughs> <laughs> ready for you so you can enjoy the show. Bring, bring your own paper, though. <laughs> it's it's meant to, to be watch. enjoyed. If you're from Turkey, bring that sandpaper you like so much. And uh, and uh, if you can't watch live or be here in studio live, you can always get on-demand audio and video after the fact. Just go to twit.tv slash mbw for Mac Break Weekly or wherever uh, finder podcasts. What are you laughing at? Mac Break Weekly? No, I just, I just got to... At some point, there's going to be an iPad with, like, Touch ID, and then people are going to... Some Weisenheimer is going to try to authenticate with something that I would definitely not approve of. <laughs> already happened, Andy. Go to YouTube, It's Andy. Pitbull. It's I'm telling I'm you. I'm sure it's already there. Uh, yep. <laughs> YouTube had that solved in three seconds after the launch event. <laughs> Does it have whorls? Does it have whorls? It's got to have unique whorls. Whirl, whir, how do you pronounce that word? Whirl. Whirls. Whirls. It's not whirl, it's whirl. Whirls. But it's pronounced whirl. Squirrels. Squirrels. <laughs> Unique squirrels. Squirrels. And I'm looking back at my pictures, a lot of pictures of rocks for some reason. <laughs> it seems like all I did was look at rocks. Rocks everywhere. Sideways rocks. Instagram filter on them. <laughs> Welcome rocks. to Leo's Vacation Photos Weekly, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be here for the next two hours. <laughs> this is what I spent... Three weeks doing, looking at rocks. It's yeah. like an old-fashioned slideshow. <laughs> because, because Uncle Leo's the here. He brought the slide so projector. <laughs> and then we went up to the top of the stairs. <laughs> and I took a picture. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. Back to work now. Break time is over.